أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today we will be continuing on the tafsir of uh, سورة ياسين last time we stopped at آية 40 and إن شاء الله we will go from here إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وآية لهم أن حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون. So we saw in the previous ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa taala was giving us signs about His control of the world, how the sun, the moon, everything, all the planets go in their orbits. No one meets another. No one uh, uh, reaches out to the other. Everything is moving in their own orbits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, is the one who controls everything. Nothing goes wrong. No crashes at all. No clashes at all. So in here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing and he's saying another sign of Allah's might and power is that he subjugated the sea to carry ships and that included the ship of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam oh no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Sayyidina Nuh uh, with all those who believed in him uh, he saved them from the flood so Al-Fulk al-Mashhoon is the, uh, the ship that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used. And Al-Zurriya, Zurriyatihim, it's all who was on that ship. And we know that when Sayyidina uh, Nuh alayhi salam was uh, making the ship, then uh, <clears throat> uh, in, uh, uh, whenever his people would come by, they would make fun of him. Where are you going to use it? You know, there is no sea here. Uh, how are you going to use this ship that you are building? And, uh, uh, and he would say, uh, you are making fun of us today? We will make fun of you tomorrow. And that means after they, uh, uh, they are saved. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Nuh how to build the ship. وَيَصْنَعُ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا He used to get a, a board and then he would uh, tie it with another one and Allah taught him everything. Now in our days, uh, the uh, machines developed and everything is uh, way much better than earlier. So the ship is not uh, going by uh, just uh, the piece of cloth that is uh, directed by the wind. No, it goes by engines. So the engines do the work. Earlier, the wind was the power, was the moving power. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in one of the surahs, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَزْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ So don't, don't fight amongst each other so you will uh, lose and you won't have power anymore. So the word ri here is the power. It's not just the wind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, saved Everyone, ayatul lom, and na hamal na zuriyatahum. So everybody, all the forefathers and their offsprings who were on that ship, and this ship had everything they need to go on with their life. Wahalakna lahum min mislihi ma yarkabun. We also. Uh, taught them or allowed them to create similar things to the ships so they can mount and then they can ride, such as um, carriages and our, our time here, cars, planes, uh, rockets, anything. Earlier, the, uh, the camel used to, to be called Safina to Sahra, the ship of the desert. 
Now, we have different things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught men to create, to make, so that it will be useful for mounting and riding. وَإِن نَشَأْ نُغْرِقْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave man the knowledge. He gave him the power to create these things. And at the same time, if he wills, he will take them all away. So he will take that power from them. So there is, there is a, a, a very important lesson here. Be careful that you do not get proud. You do not have pride. Oh, oh, I did this. If you have something that Allah has given you, if you have bounties after problems, then remember always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave, who saved you, is also able to take this blessing out of you, to put you back in the calamity that you were in. And if he does that, فَلَا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ And then there will not be any shout from them, so there will be no one to save them. The word صَرِيخ means the one whom you call to save you. For example, if you fell down, you say, oh, uh, my husband, come here, uh, I need help. Oh, my son, come, oh, my daughter, come, I need help. But always remember and keep in mind that your sarikh, the one who you call for help, should be Allah. Always say, Ya Allah. No one will understand you better than Allah. No one will help you better than Allah. Keep Allah the center or the focus of your shout. When you need Allah, just wake up. 10 minutes before, before Fajr, pray to Rakaz, talk to him, call him, ask him. And Allah said in the Quran, Ud'uni astajib lakum, call me, and I will, I will answer your call. So there will be, on the day of judgment, uh, a discussion or uh, uh, a dispute between the shaitan and those whom they followed, they followed him, and they would say, <clears throat> uh, he will say, he will tell them, I had no proof and I had no power to convince you to be off the way, to be away from as sirat al-mustaqim. But you were, you were ready to disobey Allah. ما أنا بمصرخكم وما أنتم بمصرخي. I'm not the one who will call and who and who will answer your call when you make the صريخ when you make the call. I cannot save you. I cannot save myself even. فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون. So no one will save them. From what they are suffering. The only one to go to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who puts the calamity and he is the only one who can take you out of it. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَمَتَاعًا إِلَى حِينَ So, but our mercy, but Allah's mercy is going to save you. And that will be a provision for a time. It's not forever. You have to work. You have to work hard. So there is no savior except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the uh, the some people think, especially those who do not believe in the day after, they think that death will be their rest. But there are two lines of poetry 
which are so nice in this occasion. And it says, وَلَوْ أَنَّا إِذَا مِتْنَا تُرِكْنَا لَكَانَ الْمَوْتُ رَاحَةَ كُلِّ حَيِّهِ وَلَكِنَّا إِذَا مِتْنَا بُعِثْنَا وَنُسْأَلُ بَعْدَ ذَا عَنْ كُلِّ شَيْهِ Only if we die, we will be saved, then death would be the rest for us, for, for all, all living people. But no. When we are dying, we will be resurrected and then we will be asked about everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers to warn people and to tell them, to show them the right, the right way, the correct way to show them as sirat al-mustaqeem. So they can use their intellect and they can, they can follow the rusul, they can follow the right path, and they can follow the good deeds, they can do good deeds, and they, they try to be away from anything that would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ There are two words in uh, the Arabic language, إِذَا and in. Ida means certainty. Certainty. In means doubt. But the word Ida is used for certainty. So, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ And when it's said to them, just fear of that which is before you and that which is behind you, in order that you will be saved, in order that you will receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word taqwa is the key in this ayah. What's taqwa? At-taqwa an yajiduka Allahu haythu amaraka wa yaftaqiduka haythu nahak. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will find you in the place where he ordered you to be and to miss you where he ordered you not to be. So be in the gatherings of dhikr, be in the gatherings of learning Quran, be in the gatherings of remembering Allah, be in the gatherings of doing salawat, be, be where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you and fear him. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when uh, so, اِتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ And you do that so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, you, uh, will have mercy on you on the day of judgment. So what happened to them? وَمَا, يأتيهم, وما تَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ and never came to them a sign or an ayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except they, what did they do? They turn away from it. It's a proof of stubbornness. They used to uh, belie the, um, the uh, messengers, the prophets. They used to uh, uh, abstain from the uh, orders. They didn't want to be, they didn't want to do anything good. So they liked to have bad things happening. So وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوَّةً They rejected our signs. The more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them, the more they would reject. So they rejected our signs while their inner selves, when they're inside themselves, they were convinced, they were sure that this is the, the, this is the truth. But they denied out of injustice and out of outness. They didn't want to believe. 
And when they were asked, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ And when it said to them, spend of that which Allah has given you, has provided you, what would they say? قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So those who disbelieved would say to those who believed, أَنُطْعِمُ مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَطْعَمَ Shall we feed those whom, if Allah willed, he himself would have fed? He would have made them independent and fed and fed them of his provision. Why would we do that? Why would we do something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to do? He made them poor. Why should we, why should we give them? إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ So you are asking us to do something Allah doesn't want us to do. So you are only in plain error. But for asking us to do something that Allah did not do. And remember the word أَنْفِقُ which means to, to give from what Allah provides does not mean only money. It, uh, it means love, it means mercy, it means help, it means support, it means everything good that you can do to someone else. So if you find someone in need, you might, the only thing that you might need is just something, just a few words to comfort him. Just a few words so that he would be at ease. So many people are lonely. They need a word. They don't need money. They, have, uh, uh, they are so wealthy. But they need a few words of love to hear. So this is an inner lesson for us. Give. Be generous and imitate Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the most generous. He was, he was the worst, the most generous as a father, as a husband, as a grandfather, as a, as a leader, as a fighter for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was generous in, uh, in his courage. He was so courageous. When there is something, when they hear something, he would be the first one to go and, and, and check what it is. Be generous of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ and those non-believers would say, when will this promise be fulfilled if you are truthful? They don't believe in the day after. They don't believe that there is life after death. And the wisest person of them would say, okay, if there is a day after, then Allah will give me, uh, will make me rich, will give me the same way that he, he is giving me in this dunya. And we, we, we read that, we read that always. وَلَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَا إِرُّدِتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا I don't think there, I, I don't believe there is uh, a day after. And if there is, let's say I agree and say, yes, there is, I will find lots of bounties over there. The same way that Allah gave me in this dunya, he will give me in the akhirah. But what will happen on the day after? On that day, 
they will feel the real, real way of, they will understand that they were mistaken. They will realize that they are losers. They will, they will cry and they will ask, Ya Allah, let's go back to dunya to, to do good things. But, kalla. It's a word that he has said. No one is going back. They will feel sorry that they missed, but there's nothing they, they would do. Sayyidina Umar says, amalun bila hisab, hisabun bila amal. Today you can do anything, but you will not be rewarded. But later on, there is reward or punishment and you are not going to uh, to be asked to do anything you will be either enjoying rejoicing or uh, suffering ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة they await only but a single sayha. Sayha is a call for death. And it happens the minute the person, the person's span of life ends. That will be their qiyana. That will be their death. That will be their day of judgment. It will start at that time because when the minute they are put in the grave, they will know what will happen to them on the day of judgment. They will, they will, their grave will be either, either a road of, of Jannah or it will be a place from Jahannam. ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة What will happen to them after this one صيحة, one this call for death? تأخذهم It will seize them. وهم يخصمون While they are disputing. So people are heedless about, about death, about resurrection, about reckoning. They are so engaged in this dunya. They're engaged in work, children, uh, sustenance, provision. They, they want to do everything. And they are forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is not in the center of their life. Allah is on the margin. These are the heedless people. So the question that we have to ask ourselves, why are we so careful about this dunya? We're not going to take anything with us to the grave. Nothing. Not, not our loved ones will not come with us. Our jewelry is not coming down with us. Our wealth will stay so that other people will, will enjoy. So, why? Why are we so careful about this dunya? Why are we so attached to, to this dunya? Everything is going to vanish. And even though we are attached to everything. We want more clothes, we want more uh, uh, shoes, we want more jewelry, we want more houses, we want more cars, more, more of this, more of that. But, and what will happen? Still disputing about these things that are going to vanish. Now, what will happen at the at the minute of death. فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ تَوْصِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ At that time, they will not be able to give any instructions. If they don't have a will, they will not have, they will not have time even to write their will. وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ They will not return to their families. خلاص, that's it. Death, okay? The minute of death, the day of judgment is there. 
So what would what would our will be? Remember the will of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hijrat al Wada. It was the the last thing that happened to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He he gave orders and he made people remember the core of the team. Not everything, because you won't have time to, to talk about everything. Just the most important things of the, of the team. When a father is on his deathbed, he won't tell his uh, children, he won't explain to them how the car moves and uh, how he built uh, this machine or something. No, he would tell them something that is so, so, so simple and so important. So each and every person should be waiting for death. And when someone waits for death, it's as if he is living for a long time. Because he knows that Allah is blessing the minutes that he is living. So he will be doing more and more and more, trying to gain more and more and more of the good deeds that will help him in the day after. Now, everybody, what will happen? وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ <coughs> So after, after everybody died and everybody is in grave, there was the blow. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And the horn is blown. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ And from the graves, they will return quickly to their Lord. Let's, let's go deep into this ayah. It has a lot of inner meanings. وَنُفِخَ وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned uh, a, a, a strong uh, angel to who is one of the angels of, uh, who, uh, who carry the throne. He assigned him to blow in the horn. And this angel is Israfil alayhi salam. And the second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned this duty to him, he has taken the horn and he is in the position waiting for the command to come so that he would blow. And this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمُ وَقَدْ يَلْتَقَمَ صَاحِبُ الْقَرْنِ الْقَرْنَ وَحَنَا جَبْهَتَهُ وَأَصْغَى سَمْعَهُ يَنْتَظِرُ أَنْ يُؤْمَرَ أَنْ يَنْفُخَ فَيَنْفُخْ How can I rejoice? And I know that the the angel of the horn has taken the horn. He has it ready. He has, uh, uh, he is waiting. He is listening carefully, waiting for the order of that. He is to blow, so to blow. So the Muslims got scared and they said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, what do we say? He said, قُولُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِحْمَ الْوَكِيلِ تَوَكَّلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّنَا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِحْمَ الْوَكِيلِ We depend on Allah and that suffices. So our, our word today is حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِحْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِحْمَ الْوَكِيلِ 
with you to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your support, then everything goes right. Everything. Why? Because you are entering, you want to, you want to do anything with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not with your power. So the word nafkha. Let's talk about the blow now. Uh, scholars say there are two blows. The first one, the first blow is the result of the first blow is that everyone dies. Everyone. And the second blow, the result of the second blow, everyone will come back to life. All will be standing up before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting. So we have two blows. So the blow itself is the sign of the action, whether it's death or resurrection. But who gave the order? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the orders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls everything. So what, what, what's the result of the second blow? That everyone, everyone will come yansilun, which is to come back quickly. يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ سِرَاعًا كَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَى نُصُبٍ يُوفِضُونَ This is Surah Al-Maharaj, Ayah 43. The day when they will come out of the graves quickly, as if racing to a goal. So now, everyone is awake. What would the non-believers say? قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعَثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِينَ they will say, woe to us. Who has raised us up from our place of sleep, from our place of rest? Now, we need to understand something. So, uh, how come we just mentioned that the grave, when someone is put in the grave, it will be either uh, a road of the Jannah or a place of hellfire. How come the non-believers will say it's a place of rest? Think about it. And they will say, They think that they were put in their grave or they were sleeping as if they had not remained in that grave except for an afternoon or a morning. So what's going on? How can this grave be a place of rest while we know what Allah has promised? When they would wake up, they would, they would see hellfire and they will know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. So the torture they found and they uh, had in their graves is so nothing. It's a place of rest in comparison to the, to the place or to the torture that they are going to face shortly. This is what it will be said to them. This is what the most gracious has promised. And the angel and the messengers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent were truthful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to gather all people on a day that there is no doubt on that day. So whoever is saved from the punishment in dunya, 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saving that for him. He is saving several different uh, uh, unbelievable types of punishment on the day after him. So the, the messengers were truthful and they delivered the message. They delivered what they were trustworthy to, to deliver in. They delivered what they were trusted to deliver exactly. And on the day of judgment, those de de deniers, those beliers, those who did not believe will know and will will be so sure that these are truthful messengers. In Kanat Illa Sayyhatan Wahidatan Faida Hum Jami on Ladaina Muhtarun. It will be but a single blast, a single cry, a single shout, and at once they are all brought, presented before us. So it will be just one cry. Just one. And everyone will be, be by, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one thing is that no one has an option to come to go back or not to go back. They are all forced to go back. They are all brought before us. This day. Notice, what's this word? This day, no soul will be wronged in anything. And you will be recompensed just as per what you used to do. Why is this word, فَالْيَوْمَ, important? In dunya, everyone... Uh, uh, goes by the scales of the dunya. Some people are unjust and they try to practice this unjust to, to other people who are weaker than them. Even the animals. The weak animal fears the uh, strong animal. But who is, who is the owner of the, of the scales in the day of judgment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most just. No one will be wronged. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the messengers, he sent them so that to warn people. And Allah says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We are not going to, uh, to be unjust or to punish until we send messengers. Because if we punish without sending messengers, then that's not just. But Allah, Allah is the most just. He promised them. He promised them that if you do good, you will be rewarded. If you do bad, you will be punished. So sending uh, the messengers by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a real blessing for us. When a mom always... Uh, tells her child, you have to study, you have to study. Otherwise you won't, you won't succeed in your life. You have to pay attention. What happens here? This is a blessing that the mom is doing. The mom is giving to her son because 
She is just waking him up. You have to be good to be successful. And Allah said, do this and don't do that. So whoever, whoever does something good, then he will find good. And when he finds good, then he has to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was so um, uh, bountiful to him when he sends someone to remind him. There is a result to each and every action. So now we're going to get into the results of the people of Jannah. إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to list us some of the rewards, just some of the rewards of the people of Jannah. So he says, verily, the dwellers of the paradise that day will be busy with joyful things. It will be eternal delight. Now, Go to the first, go to the second word. Ashab al Jannah. What is Ashab? Who is Ashab? Who is Ashab? Is the friend that you take, who is uh, uh, a friend of yours, and he is a loyal friend. How do you decide if, a lo if, if your friend is loyal or not? He loves you? Yes. He cares about you? Yes. He uh, wants you to be happy, yes. What else? The most important thing is that he would advise you for the sake of Allah. So if he finds you going astray a little bit, he will take your hand and put you back on the right track, on as sirat al-mustaqim. So these are the friends. These are the friends of dunya. They will be friends in the akhirah also. The friends of dunya care about your Quran. The friends of dunya care about your, your uh, hadith. The friends of uh, dunya care about your being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They care about your being close to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the true friends. It's not the friend who makes you laugh all the time. It's not the friend who makes you uh, happy all the time. This, this would come to an end. So the true friend is the one who takes your hand when you fell down, when you fall down. He wants you always to be standing, stand still. And if you can try to be the best friend to your children, to your spouse, to your uh, uh, siblings, to your neighbors, to Muslims, how can you be that? How can you be that? Just fear and, and be careful about their akhirah. So a mother does not love her, her child just for this dunya. She feeds him, she uh, buys him clothes, she buys him toys, she buys him everything. That's not enough. You have to nourish his soul the same way that you nourish his body. So be careful about their akhirah. These are true friends. Be a true friend to whom, whoever is around you. So in Jannah, there are people, people together. So anything, what will happen to those people? They would say, oh, do you remember when we used to do this and that? Do you remember when we used to uh, compete in Quran? Do you remember when, you, you, when we used to compete in sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? These are the ashab. These are the true friends. 
So what happens to these? They are enjoying, they are rejoicing. In Ashab al Jannati Lyoma fi shugulin fakihun. Fakihun means they are enjoying, rejoicing. What are they enjoy, uh, enjoying? They are enjoying what Allah has prepared for them. And Allah said in the hadith of Qudsi, I have prepared for my righteous slaves that which no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and has never crossed the mind of any human being. And the highest of this is looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are the, the people of Jannah, the owners of Jannah, the dwellers of Jannah, they are busy enjoying, enjoying the bounties that Allah has prepared for them. هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون Just one, I want to add one point about the uh, friend. I want everyone to, to, especially mothers, to choose good companions for their, for their children. Because the friend, the friend, so the mother needs to choose good friends for their children. Because the friend will drag your son or your daughter, wherever they, they are. So good ones will take their hands and go with them to good places. And it said, Tell me who your friend is and I will tell you who you are. They and their wives or their spouses will be pleasant in shade, reclining on raised couches. <clears throat> so this is one of the blessings. <laughs> they and their spouses are in heaven, are enjoying together. Now someone would say, oh, my spouse in dunya will be my spouse in the akhirah. How come? That, that person is... Uh, is, uh, uh, is not good to me in this dunya. How can I bear him in the akhirah? Or he will say this wife is not good to me in dunya. How can she be uh, my wife in akhirah? Well, remember one thing. Since they are in Jannah, then they are good people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not get those people to Jannah Unless they are good. So when they are in Jannah, everything that was bad about them in dunya will be erased. And they will be only good. They will have only the best of manners. So, so they will be the best people in Jannah. So this is one of the ways that their spouses, they will be enjoying their spouses. And also, one th one another thing to remember that the other spouse might be the reason why this per this spouse is doing these these bad things in this dunya to me, with their ways of talking, actions, manners. They might not be the reason why someone is mistreating them. Everything will be erased in in Akhirah. They are in Jannah, which means they are good people. So they will enjoy each other again. They will be leaning back on raised couches. And, and imagine they are leaning back. They are relaxing. They are chilling out. They will have therein in Jannah all types of fruits and all that they ask for all that they desire everything they will wish they will have it in 
uh, in the Akhirah. Salamun qawlan min Rabbil Rahim. So what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to them? Salam. Peace. Peace is salamu qawla min Rabbil Rahim. Peace, a word from the Lord, the most merciful. This is what will be said to them. So when people get into paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say salam, peace. So he will say it by himself. He will not tell an, uh, another angel to say it to the people of paradise. No, we will hear the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying salam. And that would be the best thing to hear the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله we'll see you next week السلام عليكم